Hi, good afternoon, one and all. Let us coming to that tenth biology. Apart from that third chapter, transportation. I mean that the circulatory system, why we call in that animals transportation. I mean that animals they can transport the materials, especially by the way of the circulatory system. I mean that blood to blood vessels and the heart. While coming to that transportation in plants, we have, as we know that vascular tissue, which is called as a conductive tissue or transport tissue, which is present in the bundles like xylem and the phloem. In case of DS of leaf, while we observe the DS of leaf, we can find out this the vascular tissue is present in the bundles like xylem and phloem. Already we experienced in the first chapter nutrition, DS of leaf. We experience in the structure. So, coming to the bill, vascular tissue is a permanent tissue. It is a complex tissue which consists of mainly xylem and phloem. As we know that water and minerals, water and mineral salts which are transported through the xylem, water and mineral salts which are extracted from soil to xylem by the osmosis. Already we experienced in the previous video root hair which can absorb the soil particle and water into the xylem tissue by endosmosis phenomena. Endosmosis phenomena by the basis of cell sap. By the basis of cell sap. So I mean that water and mineral salts which are exported to the xylem with the help of three parameters. Those are obviously the first one is root hair. So the root is a small hair like projections which are pulling the water towards to that root afterwards with the differentiation of the concentration levels like cell sap and soil particulate water but with the difference the water soil particulate water is entered to the, the root hair cell from there onwards it goes to the, the upper portions opposite to the, the gravitational force by root pressure I mean that the first step is root hair the second one is root pressure and the third step is transpiration or evaporation or guttation. So usually the root hair and the root pressure is enough to the, to the small lengthy plants like herbs and shrubs which are nearly 2 to 3 meters. So I mean that the small plants, the small plants only the two levels are enough to pulling the water towards to the to water, towards to the to water regarding to the to reaching the plant. So I mean that the root hair and root pressure is enough for the herbs and the shrubs. While coming to the big trees, for example mango trees, neem trees, such a eucalyptus, they are nearly 100 to 200 square feet height. So such a lengthy plants, it is not enough. Only the root hair and root pressure is not at all sufficient to transportation the water from gravitational force against the two such a long distances so that apart from this root hair and the root pressure they need another technique it is called as a transpiration or evaporation so while the water is evaporated the water is cooling from this the soil to the two the reaching to the two veins of the leaves so this is called as a transpiration method next coming to the two Food transportation. The food is obviously prepared in the leaves because of the leaves are the major site of photosynthesis regions as we already studied in the first chapter. So, food transportation through the phloem tissue. Through the phloem tissue. This we have to understand with one of the experiment like the hybrid experiment. So, first of all, we come to the root hair already completed in the previous video. Now, today, this session, especially, we are going to discuss about transportation plants by root pressure and these effects experiment and transpiration. So today we are going to discuss about the root pressure, transpiration and how the food is transported in the flowing tissue we can be experienced through this effects experiment. So let us first discuss about that what is mean by root pressure. Obviously the roots are pushing the water, some water, extent level that we call as a root pressure that we can understand easily one experiment. See, first let us select one well-potted plant. 
that we should be placed in the water tub. First, we have to select a well potted plant that should be kept in the water pot. Water pot. Then we have to cut nearly one centimeter length of the this soil level. Just we have to cut the stem portion in the cut the stem portion in the just one centimeter above the soil level. And we have to insert and we have to insert a glass tube-like structure, transparent. So this is the these are the roots of the plants. This is the stem portion. Just one centimeter above, we have to cut the stem portion. And we have to insert a glass transparent tube. Glass transparent tube by using the some clamps. So this is called as a clamp which can fix the glass tube to the to stem portion. This is the glass transparent tube. These are the water level. First, at the beginning, when we are cutting the stem portion, the water which is present in the water tub that we are adding the color. So obviously, the colored reagent should reaches to the to roots so the, through the roots the water is uh, coming to the to root hair afterwards the water can be goes through the stem portion stem portion now the water is in the m1 level this is the initial value we have to note down the initial value m1 so after keeping this plant uh, the entire setup we have to allow them for uh, two to three hours after observation of three hours obviously the water level in the initial value m1 we have to note down next after three hours obviously suddenly the water level has to be high that means the water is pulling towards to the earth against the gravitation force that we have to find out the reading m2 so i mean that the m2 minus m1 it is the level of water which is represents to the earth, root pressure so root pressure means the roots are having some pressure which is pulling the water against the gravitation force that should be done by the root pressure along with the root heads. So first is the root heads which can collect the water from soil particulate to the to roots from there onwards it should be pulling through the root pressure. So of course it is enough for in the small plants of herbs and shrubs while in case of the big trees. So in addition to these root pressure we are having the transpiration technique. Transpiration is nothing but a evaporation process. It is a physical process. Actually, when we are supplying the one liter to the plant, it can be absorbed only one percent. Remaining the ninety-nine percent of water should be evaporated by splitting of water molecule in presence of sunlight. Already we learned in the first chapter of photosynthesis, photolysis by heat reaction. So in the way, the water is a transpiration. The water is transpiration. So when the water is transpired, transpiration or evaporation process is exposed, automatically the ground level water should be reaching the upward direction. So the leaves are sent to the water molecule. The ground level water is reaching in this phenomena. So that this is a circulation which can be held in the plant. So this is called as a transpiration. So transpiration of course already we have the knowledge about transpiration, it is the process of guttation. So when we take the polythene cover and we have to tie this one of the branch of the plant, obviously we can observe that some droplets which is present inside of the this polythene cover, these droplets represents the transpiration process that already we experienced in this nutrition plant 7th class by Von Hellman's experiment. So this is the thing. Next one is coming to that. So these are transportation of minerals and soils, especially the plants requires as well as the nutrients like NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, these are the macronutrients along with the micronutrients like some mineral salts like NaCl, sodium chloride, NaCl, sodium chloride plus magnesium sulfate. So along with the NPK fertilizers, the plants requires the micronutrients in the form of mineral salts especially the sodium chloride and magnesium sulfate. These are the essential mineral salts which is useful to the plant proper growth. So these mineral salts which are dissolved in the water, so the water should be comes to the plant by the root hair. This is the root hair. So the water, the 
minerals and salts which are dissolved in the water level that should be reaches to the to root head next to root pressure transpiration so by these three steps the water should reaches to the to from soil to ground level to the top of the branch of the plant so this is this will happen in this uh, plant uh, transportation now next coming to the to uh, effits experiment this we can understand uh, the blackboard explanation part let us focus on the uh, blackboard see actually food transportation see coming to the uh, the transportation of uh, food in the plants by this uh, flowing tissue so actually effits are the green flies uh, so obviously they have to extract the food from the flowing of the plant so how we know that one actually the biologist the biologist which have to observe this uh, while the green flies are effects uh, which are extracting the juices uh, from the flowing tissue they have to cut this proboscis uh, this is the needle extractor which usually this uh, green flies are effects are injecting the juices uh, from the flowing tissue so actually the green flies are effects uh, they have a sharp uh, needle like structure so these they have to inject uh, into the up to the uh, flowing portion so this is the xylem they know that uh, water is uh, available in the uh, xylem part uh, the food is available in the flowing portion so xylem means the water can transport in that uh, upward direction obviously the leaf which can prepare the food material that should be transported through the down downward directions uh, means I, i mean that uh, it is reaches to the all the parts of the plant so these proboscis like needle extractor inject into the uh, up to the flowing portion so how we have to let you know that uh, the proboscis uh, is the needle extractor which can suck in this uh, these plant juices how the effects know about that uh, the food is present in the phloem so when the biologist how to dissect these proboscis portion when they have to observe this uh, proboscis uh, through the di dissection part uh, they find out that uh, some of the food particles uh, the flowing which is present in that uh, flowing portion so that uh, the biologist uh, can get the information obviously the green flies are effects uh, they have to inject this uh, needle like structure up to flowing portion so let us come to that uh, veins of the leaf uh, consist of xylem and phloem and these tissues are uh, continuous with the stem part actually leaf is having the xylem and phloem but these tissues are continuous to the to stem because of uh, this is a plant uh, this is a stem portion so these leaves veins are continuous with the stem portion so these xylem and phloem are continuous with the stem portion so that is uh, occurs in this so as you know that uh, actually let us come to the to effects are mosquitoes or green flies the main one obviously they are sucking the plant juices in the evening times so that uh, the mosquitoes are more number in the greenery let us come to the to female mosquitoes they are sucking the animal blood i mean that uh, in female anopheles mosquito or female pulex mosquitoes or aedes mosquitoes they are sucking the human blood and they are causing the spreading of these contagious diseases like uh, malaria and uh, filaria like the dreadful diseases because they are act as a vectors so this is the information about uh, aphids so usually the plant juices sucking the male mosquitoes female mosquitoes sucking the human blood so that is the information next uh, the last part of the the conclusion point of uh, this transportation in plants uh, they are given to the uh, the growth rings and uh, removing the ring of the uh, bark see this is the portion of the plant uh, stem portion so when we have to cut uh, the ring like structure of the bark plant uh, so obviously from phloem uh, from upward that means from leaves to roots the food is transported when we cut down and we have to make a barrier the food movement obviously the food can be stored and it should be swelling over so some growth is occurs in this portion there is no growth here after some days automatically lack of the nutrients the other parts of the tissues or the cells they leads to die finally the plant goes to leads to death portion 
so next coming to that uh, the last point of view actually the foresters are uh, encourage the predators such as the foxes and badgers and hawks and uh, owls uh, as they help to the to uh, keep down the population of wolves and rabbits gray squirrels are too great damage so particularly cucinaria crop can grow in the beach like a seashore and for this reason in some of the parts in some parts it is impossible to grow these trees as a crop so while we are observing the sea shores while we observe the sea shores some of the plants they are having the some more bending portions because of these squirrels and owls can make a great damage to the to these plants why because they know that uh, the squirrels and rabbits and owls and foxes they know that uh, the plant uh, is having the phloem in this phloem they are available of uh, food so that they are making the holes and they are sucking the plant juices and they have to make to survive so this is the information about uh, transportation so till now we discuss about uh, transportation mean the nutrients uh, supplements uh, to the required uh, cells so obviously the cell requires the nutrients in the form of solids and liquids and gases to perform the various kinds of work so that in animals we are having a circulatory system like a blood blood vessels and heart when coming to the plants they are having only xylem and the phloem xylem for water and mineral salts phloem for the food transportation thank you children i conclude this topic transportation next we move to the another topic fourth chapter expression in the next video thank you thank you very much